Hey evaluators, my name is Val Harold from Five Star Technology Solutions. And today I wanna to show you in 20 minutes or less how you can get started for your 2018-19 evaluation schedule. I'm gonna utilize our Indiana demo site for today's webinar. Um, indemo.5-starpivot.com is our demo site that you are welcome to utilize for practice purposes. You can show this to teachers, let them use it to practice, but it allows you to practice so that you can feel confident before launching into your real evaluation season within your live site. I'm gonna go ahead and log in as a principal for today. And one of the very first things that you're going to wanna to do as an evaluator before you begin your evaluations or observations for this year is you're going to wanna to make sure that you have set your evaluating staff. Setting your staff allows you to choose who you're going to be observing or evaluating this school year. And again, this is a critical step before you actually begin your observations because it determines the list that you'll see when you actually begin your observations or your evaluations at the end of the year. To start, you'll wanna make sure that your name is selected as the evaluator. You can filter by building if your staff members are tied to buildings within Pivot. You can also choose to maybe show those staff members that you're assigned to only already. This is good if you haven't had a transition in building and you plan to mainly evaluate the same staff as you did last year. This is a good way to double check that staff listing. But today I'm gonna to show you how to set your evaluating staff. So I'm gonna to toggle this to off, filter by building. I'm gonna go ahead and choose to evaluate everyone that's tied to this building. And I need to make sure I set the proper evaluator type. Primary evaluators within Pivot have the ability to observe, evaluate, and give a summative evaluation for their primary staff members. They also have the ability to view any observations or evaluations that are performed by other evaluators in the site. So it's a really good way to be able to cross-reference your data for all of your primary staff members. Secondary evaluators are usually assistant principals or interim staff who have the ability or need the ability to observe staff only. Secondary evaluators in our system cannot evaluate their secondary staff members. They also can't see any historical or current observations or evaluations performed by other evaluators for those same staff members. If you need to remove a placement from years prior, you can simply select that evaluator type and hit none. And this will remove whatever evaluator status you had over that staff member. For today, I'm gonna to go ahead and select everyone. I wanna be a primary evaluator to everyone here and hit update. You'll notice that my evaluator type now changes to primary for these staff members. Filtering by all building. You can bring up your primary evaluators so you can sort by simply selecting the arrows here or the carrots and you can pull your primary staff to the front, just again to do a real quick double check. Now, if there are staff members that are not appearing on this list for you to choose to evaluate, that means they likely don't have a user account within Pivot. So you'll wanna make sure that you reach out to your Pivot account manager and or our Pivot help desk at pivot at 5-startech.com to inquire about getting those staff members added. Once you've set your evaluating staff for the list, you've got a couple of options. If your staff has submitted SLOs and you need to view those and approve those before you begin the observation process, you can locate those here. You can look for any that are pending approval. If you've already approved, you can still access those. Same thing with growth plans. 
If you're a district that requires or asks your teachers to submit a growth plan, you'll be able to see all growth plans that are pending approval here. And of course, any that have also been approved. To approve, the, approve a growth plan, simply select the eyeball, read through, offer any feedback. If you need to request a revision, you certainly have that ability. In that case, it will go back to the teacher's dashboard in revision requested status, where they can continue to edit based on your feedback and send back to you. You can duplicate if you would like to use this growth plan for possibly another individual. Save and return, print, or of course, approve. The teacher will automatically be approved or send an email and notified that their growth plan was approved. You can also very, very quickly view any documents that your staff members have already submitted under staff documents. You can add a document of your own if you need to, or you can simply launch into your dashboard to begin your observation process. As a reminder, this school year filter serves as a filter for data that's already in the system. So if you don't have any data that would live on this dashboard yet for 1819, then your year likely defaults to last year or even another previous year. And that's fine. Once you get staff members that are submitting self-assessments to you, or once you actually begin your observations, then your school year will default to 1819. If you want to view the observations for staff members that are on your primary staff, but maybe the observations were done by another evaluator, you'll locate those under staff observations. They won't live on your dashboard because you were not the evaluator who performed that observation. This dashboard serves solely as a purpose of your activity. So again, I'm not seeing any observations right now that have been performed for Mary Moore yet. Maybe if I wanna check out years previous, I can do that and I do see that Mary was observed by a different evaluator in 2016-17. So really great resource when you're wanting to get to know your staff and, your, and their historical progress. Jumping into dashboard, this is where you'll begin your observation cycle. You'll simply want to go ahead and choose your teacher, choose your rubric, choose an observation type, and of course you can choose one or all domains. I guess one, two, or three domains. Now what this will do is if you only choose one, it's actually going to allow you to only code to that domain and the competencies tied to that domain when you're ready for coding within the process. So this is really helpful if you're going into a classroom specifically looking for purposeful planning. Today I'm going to go ahead and choose all three and begin. You'll start on the Collect Evidence tab where again you simply script as you see activity. You may choose to take files, maybe even a video clip, or perhaps the teacher emailed you their lesson plans prior to going into the classroom. So you'll be able to pull in those files from your device here. Once you've selected your file, you want to hit save so that it generates a new piece of evidence over here. You'll notice that each time you hit enter or save, a new piece of evidence is generated with a date and time stamp. This is helpful for when you go in to code your evidence because you'll see that I have a specific piece of evidence, one phrase that I can select and tie to my rubric. So it's as simple as selecting and tying to the applicable competency. 
Now, again, as you're thinking through these pieces of evidence, you want to think about not only which competency they tie to, but whether or not this piece of evidence serves as a highly effective, effective improvement necessary or an ineffective example of this competency. Now, let's say this piece of evidence is tied to 2.3, students engage in academic content, and I felt like that was an effective example of that competency. However, the next activity that the students did, they weren't as impressed. Maybe there were some areas in which the teacher was struggling to keep them engaged. So this was an example that could be tied to this competency, but I'm going to go ahead and mark that as improvement necessary. Now when you go over to your rate competency tab, you'll have the ability to use your evidence notes to help make a determination of rating for the competency as a whole. So I only had one piece of evidence tied to effective here, so I'll go ahead and leave that as effective. Here I do see that I have a piece of evidence, well, two pieces of evidence tied to this competency. One was improvement necessary, the other one I said was a very highly effective. So looking at these evidence notes, I'll likely want to make a determination between highly effective, effective, or improvement necessary based on what I'm seeing here. For today, I'm going to go ahead and choose effective, and maybe I want to give a justification comment. I can filter through my ratings by simply hitting next, or I can toggle by selecting the different tabs. Notice that when there are no evidence notes found, that simply means that I didn't tie any of my evidence, either the documents or files that I uploaded or my scripting to this competency. I can go ahead and give it a rating if I'd like, if that's what my policy calls for, or I can actually just skip it and it's not going to count against the teacher. When I'm ready to review, I can hop over to my review screen. It'll show me my domains with my competencies, the evidence that I tied to those competencies with the timestamp, and then also my rating for them. At any point in time in this process, I can save and return, and it will take me back to my dashboard Will this observation will remain in edit mode that I can revisit, continue to add to it, modify, etc. Or I can go ahead and digitally sign. To do that, I just simply place my cursor in the text screen and sign. If I have a touch screen or an iPad that has a stylus, I can use that as well and save. Your staff members also have the ability to digitally sign their observation once you've finalized it. Pretty cool new feature. Of course, my print options are here. If you do have um, those teachers that just like to see a printed version, my signature lies on it. And when I'm ready to send this over to the teacher, I can simply hit finalize. An email will be sent to the teacher and you can confirm. And now you'll see that that observation lives not only on your dashboard, but it's also going to live on the dashboard of Mary Moore the teacher whom I observed. When you're ready for the evaluation process later in the year, it's as simple as starting your evaluation, choosing your staff member, selecting the same rubric that you used for observations, and beginning. Of course, now you'll see that your core professionalism competencies do appear within this rubric. Of course, if I were to choose does not meet standard for any of these, based on how that rubric is designed, it would deduct one full point from the overall score. Jumping over to my summative results, you'll see that I now have numbers tied to these different ratings and competencies. These numbers come from evidence that was pulled over from my previous observations for this staff member. 
So we see that again, I have an, one observation for Mary Moore. So this is the information that's getting pulled in to these summative results. If I want a reminder of what this evidence was, I can select the eye icon. I can check out what that evidence was. This was in the form of a script, the date and timestamp for it, and that rating for it. So based on this, I'm seeing an average score that's then calculated out to an overall average for the domain. I can then, based on this, choose whether I want to give it a highly effective or effective. And of course, I can even bring over the decimal place if I'd like. I can leave a comment or I can choose to leave it blank. So hopefully this automatic calculation does save you quite a bit of time and hopefully seeing your previous observation data pulled into this evaluation is going to serve as a really nice neat backpack for all of the performance that you observed while you were in that teacher's classroom, as well as any evidence that they had submitted into the system previously. For evaluation summary, I can jump over here and see that Pivot did a nice job weighting my domains and providing a final TER score. Again, I can digitally sign. And finalize to send back to the teacher. And then of course, our final step in the process, something that you likely won't get to until after the state has released um, student scores and SWL scores for the year, is our final summative evaluation. Again, choosing your staff member and choosing their staff group will allow you to be specific and will allow Pivot to know how to weight those final scores for your teachers. You can see if there was, again, that TER rubric, so the score is pulled over. You can see that evaluation from directly within Pivot can pull it back up for a reference. I can go ahead and confirm the value. Again, if there was individual growth model data provided, I can give that a score or value. SWL scores, these can actually be put in by your district pivot administrator so that when you receive those scores back from the state, each building would have their score and it would automatically be pulled over here. If you need help doing that, please reach our Pivot Help Desk when that time arrives, and we can certainly help you get those input. And then finally, this teacher did have an approved SLO on file, so I can also see that here to help me determine the value that I give her here. And now you'll see that Pivot pulls it all together based on the weighted components of that staff group that I had in the system to provide a final score and or final label. Again, you can digitally sign. Print, save and return for later or finalize. So we very, very quickly just went through the entire evaluation process, highlighting a couple things that your teachers can also do within the system, such as submit an SLO, submit documentation, submit a growth plan. These are all additional ways in which you can interact within Pivot with your teacher so that you can make the very best of your evaluation process. Before we hang up today, I do wanna show you one final thing. We do have a new trends report that I feel like will be super beneficial, not only to your evaluating staff, but also to your teachers. We now have an evidence by competency report. And as you also notice, we do have a growth plans by competency report as well. This is great for professional development planning within your district. Again, you can filter by evaluator. So if you're a central office staff member, you can kind of check out to see um, by evaluators how your, their staffs are doing, by staff person building, or by a specific staff person. 
So right now I see where or how much evidence for Mary Moore, or if I want to go ahead and do all, is tied to these various competencies. This is super helpful, especially as you near maybe the end of the year. And as a teacher, if I run this report for myself, I can maybe see the areas in which I may be still struggling to provide evidence. As a district leader, you can look through here and determine um, where your staff overall is struggling to provide evidence or where they're, they're very strong. So for instance, if it's only January and you're seeing, um, you know, or maybe if it's only October, I guess, and you're seeing seven, seven pieces of evidence already tied to developing student understanding and mastery of lesson objectives, that might be a, some good feedback for you over regarding how your staff's doing overall in this area. So hopefully this report will help building leaders and teachers themselves determine areas of strength and weakness so that growth can continually be accomplished. All right, guys, I know I went over 20 minutes, so I apologize for that, but everything here I felt was very valuable to show you before you start the year. Of course, if you need more instruction or more user guides or just more support in general, or you have some questions, please reach out to us by selecting the question mark icon within your Pivot site. This will launch you to our knowledge base where you can search for user guides to share with your teachers. Register for any of our scheduled free webinar sessions or reach out our, to our help desk to request help, ask a question, or request additional training. Thank you so much, guys, for your time today. Hopefully, your year is off to a great start, and I'm looking forward to continuing to serve you and your district as the year progresses. Bye, guys.